Hey Smug Stickets everyone, welcome to a new part of What If Bardock Was Sent Into The Future. If you want to catch up, the playlist is in the description. But let's do a little recap. Last time, Goku Black stole Goku's body. Though he had trouble with the power at first, he did manage to take down Gohan, Chi Chi, and many others. But his vendetta against Vegeta pushed him to stay in this timeline, growing stronger and ravaging the planet. Goten, Trunks, and Bulma escaped, reaching Bardock and training with Miras alongside him. They eventually made it back to Earth, where they teamed up with Vegeta, the androids, and a Goku who was still in Zamozu's body. It was a hard-fought battle, but a team attack involving the spirit bomb between Goku, Goten, and Bardock's future site ended the monster. Now, thanks to Bulma and the Galactic Patrol, Goku is back to his original body, getting ready for the Tournament of Power. The like goal for this video, as always, is 3,000 likes. Let's begin. The day of the Tournament of Power has arrived. Complying with Bardock's request, Goten and Trunks have also been brought in. Their recent training has impressed everyone. Gohan and Piccolo have also realized that they need to step it up a notch following the attacks from Black. Thus, Gohan has received the potential awakening by the Elder Kai, taking a chance to visit Boo alongside his father, something he'd do quite often. Boo had calmed down a lot ever since their early days, and he actually really missed Shin when Goku Black killed him. But right now, he was asleep. Piccolo, on the other hand, followed Bardock's lead, focusing on his own heritage, and with Dende's help, obtained a new state through the Dragon Balls. Bardock's training with Goten and Trunks also instigated sparring between the others. Bardock was surprised, but they were Saiyans after all. What they were missing was one fighter. Goku nearly suggested Frieza before Bardock gave him the dirtiest look in the universe and tried to melt him with his mind. Instead, Bardock suggested Granola. The Cerulean wasn't sure, but he accepted. He liked Bardock and the kids and got along well with Goku. Once there, Bardock was nearly entirely focused on staying with the kids and the Universe 6 Saiyans. He was really impressed to see girls so powerful. They reminded him of Fasha, though he wished Kaba would put on some muscle mass. Universe 7's team was made up of Bardock, Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, Piccolo, Goten, Trunks, 17, 18, and Granola. The start was explosive, as in an instant, Granola's sniper shot several fighters out and became a prime target. But Goku and him were able to put Push everyone else off. This slimy frost tried to take down Goten and Trunks with his tail while they were distracted, only to find himself hanging off of the arena by the tail. Bardock could have dropped him, but instead he slammed him around a little bit first, just to knock any other forms out of his system, and kicked him off of the arena. Just like the original, Goku is able to tap into Ultra Instinct and begins his fight against Jiren. Only this time, he had a frame of reference as to how to use it, seeing the results of the kids and Bardock's training with Miras, which he used to help guide his movements. He tried to think like his father, tried to figure out outcomes, though he quickly realized that their two forms of their ultra states were completely different. Even so, because of this, his ultra instinct was slightly more evolved from the start. Goten and Trunks were enthralled by the Universe 6 Saiyans, whom they tried to take on several times. Kel and Kaulifla weren't interested in fighting kids, but were surprised to see just how strong they were, especially once they fused into Gotenks. They had no idea there was something further beyond. The kids got into really hot water once Kale went berserk. Bardock was surprised upon seeing this power. It felt like raw, primal Saiyan strength, not dissimilar to Super Saiyan 4. In an instant, Bardock burst into set form, exploding in rage to keep her away from Gotenks. The two are caught in a clash at the center of the arena, their aura breaking apart everything around them and even knocking down enemies. But Gotenks fires blast in the middle disguising Bardock's location as he appears above her and with a swift hammer fist knocks her down to the center of the arena. Kaulifla yells out a paint no, rushing at Bardock, who disappears into the crowd that had been gathering around him. Kaulifla fires blasts to disperse them as Bardock apologizes to Gotenks, grabbing him and chucking him up to the sky. Kaulifla, thinking that was Bardock, pursues. It's too late when she realizes it's not him, with Bardock firing a riot javelin behind her and sending her into Kale. Gotenks didn't appreciate that, but he did think it was a pretty cool move, and went on to use similar tactics against Dispo and other Pride Troopers. Bardock turns to the Universe 6 Saiyans with a smile. They were formidable fighters. He'd love to train with them one day. But Kaulifla turned to shake Kale, telling her that she needs to calm down and listen to her. If they don't do something, then they'll lose everything and each other. Kale began to calm down as Kaulifla took out the Potara. In a flash of light, the fusion appeared from the crater, only to find that Bardock had already moved on to fight Topo alongside Seventeen. She was confused and yelled at the old man. Bardock smirked and was about to fight her when Gohan stepped up. No. 
It's my turn now. Let's show them what we've got, Gohan. Bardock and Seventeen turned in surprise to see Piccolo 2 had appeared before them in his new yellow form. Kefla smirked, another cocky Universe 7 Saiyan. How fun. But Gohan was so much different than before. His death at the hands of someone who looked like his father had made him realize just how far behind he was. If he wanted to protect his friends and family, fulfill his promise to 16, then he would have to act differently. Bardock was surprised to see the determination in Gohan's eyes. He was the one son family member he was the most detached from, simply because he was a bit more wary of the Saiyans and he was older. Bardock respected that though, even if Videl, Pan, and Mr. Satan all welcomed him. But now, now, while Gohan was in front of his grandfather and father, the half Saiyan felt like he had something to prove. He had been preparing for this alongside Piccolo, training their newly acquired forms. Gohan and Piccolo's potential had been unleashed, and now it was time to show it. The Saiyan burst forward, the purple electricity around him shocking Kefla as he passed by her and kicked her down. The fusion persisted, spinning to catch herself and firing a great barrage. Gohan slapped it away, while Piccolo single-handedly boxed the giant Anilaza. The whole crowd was left in awe. These two had progressed so much in such a short amount of time. It made Beerus spring to his feet. Him and Whis had been so dead set on Goku and Vegeta that they ignored these two incredible fighters. Perhaps it was time to bring them on board too. Sparks flew as their fists collided, creating shockwaves that echoed through the battlefield. Gohan's calm focus was unshaken, using his strategic mind to block and counter each of Kefla's wild, powerful strikes. Piccolo did what he could against their giant size of Anilaza, using his incredible agility and intelligence to land strike after strike. Still, one single punch from Anilaza was a massive damage. The Namekian needed to match him somehow. That's when Goku yelled over at Piccolo while in the midst of battle against Jiren, just like at the World tournament. Giant Piccolo. Piccolo roared as he activated his giant form, his body expanding until it towered over even Anulaza. Now a colossal giant himself, Piccolo unleashed a devastating series of strikes, hammering Anulaza with earth-shattering blows. The stage beneath them began to crack, but Piccolo maintained a relentless assault. Just when it seemed like Piccolo had the upper hand, fighters from other universes saw their opportunity. While Piccolo dominated the android, multiple fighters attacked him from all directions, launching energy blast and coordinated strikes, Piccolo grunted in defiance, absorbing each hit, standing tall, but the pressure was building. Too many opponents, too many attacks. Piccolo made a bold decision. His eyes gleamed with determination as he caught Anilaza in one final crushing blow, using all his remaining strength to punch the robot down with him. The impact was so immense that the stage beneath them gave away. The ground crumbled and cracked under the sheer force, sending a massive section of the arena plummeting down to the void below. Low. Anilaza and the fighters who were attacking sent spiraling down. Piccolo reverted back to normal size, breathing heavily. As he began to fall, his eyes locked onto Gohan, who was still battling Kefla. A small smile formed on Piccolo's face as he called out, Do it now, Gohan! His voice echoed across the arena, and Gohan, seeing his mentor's sacrifice, felt a surge of energy, his clenched fists trembling, his body stiffening with raw emotion. But he caught himself before he lost all control. In that moment, his time cage activated, freezing Gohan in place. Kefla smirked, preparing to deliver a devastating blow while Gohan was strapped. She charged the powerful blast to finish him off, but then it happened. Gohan roared with primal fury, his aura flaring violently. In a brilliant flash of light, he shattered the time prison, his body surging with untold power. For a split second, he transformed, his hair turning white, his eyes burning with a red glow. Beast Gohan had awakened, if only for that instant. The sheer force of the transformation cracked the ground beneath him. Before Kefla could even react, Gohan appeared in front of her, his speed now beyond anything she had faced. With a single devastating punch, he sent her crashing down to the ground, the impact reverberating through the arena, leaving everyone stunned in silence. Kefla was out. Gohan stumbled, panting heavily as he detransformed. His body was pushed to its limit, and he struggled to stay on his feet. The immense power had drained him, leaving him vulnerable. Sensing the opportunity hidden Saunel, the Universe 6 Namekian rushed forward, aiming to take down Gohan before he could recover. But just as their attacks were about to connect, a fiery aura erupted before them. Super Saiyan 4 Bardock appeared in a blur, blocking their strikes. His golden eyes glimmered, with
with fierce determination. Gohan, seeing his grandfather leap into battle, found a second wind. His body shook as he pushed himself to rise once more. I'm not done yet, he muttered, trying to tap back into that primal power. Though he couldn't fully awaken Beast Gohan again, his fighting spirit burned brightly. The two Saiyans, grandfather and grandson, stood side by side. Together, they unleashed a devastating combo. Gohan's Kamehameha and Bardock's Riot Javelin. The energy beams intertwined, crashing into Hidden Saunel with overwhelming force. The blast engulfed the two, sending them flying out of the arena. As the dust settled, Gohan's strength gave out. He collapsed, exhausted from the battle and the brief surge of Beast Gohan. He was still new to that ultimate state, and unlocking a new power further beyond so quickly had really worn him down. Still, Beerus was impressed by them both, and as Gohan disappeared into the stands, Beerus said that he wanted them both at his planet. Granola tried to help Goku against Jiren. A few hits actually worked, with Goku positioning Jiren so Granola could snipe at him, but it served more to annoy him than anything else. Jiren had to get rid of him, but to his surprise, Gotenks pushed him away and began a brawl against him. The Grey wasn't there to play with children, even if they were impressive. They tried various tactics taught to them by Bardock, even having Jiren run into Topo while pursuing, but this wasn't going to last forever. As Jiren finally caught up to them, and while grabbing them by the face, they defused. Jiren just bumped their heads into each other and dumped them into the abyss. But not before Goten left him with a gift, a blast to the face. Bardock and the others were proud. Bardock also began to understand what Mirrors was trying to lead him to. There was no doubt in his mind, his son was an incredible martial artist. By the end of the tournament, Universe 7 was very obviously the victors. Vegeta, Goku, Granola, and Bardock remained. Goku was popping in and out of Ultra Instinct, but Bardock's support never wavered. The two worked together against Jiren, while Vegeta appeared to strike where he saw openings, and Granola fired shots from afar. Bardock's Ultra Perception combined with Goku's Ultra Instinct proved to be just what they needed. Bardock could predict exactly how Goku would dodge, exactly where Jiren would be positioned. Jiren had no chance to get anywhere, and the more hits Bardock got in, the stronger he got. That was, until Jiren grabbed Bardock by the face and blocked an attack from both Vegeta and Granola with his body, throwing him away. Bardock was severely hurt. Even if he did have future sight, Jiren's sheer speed and power was too much. Goku and Vegeta continued the fight, and Jiren bounced off platforms every time he got close to the edge. While Goten and Gohan cheered for their family, Bardock tuned himself in and paid attention, commanding Granola to strike specific points of the arena. Any place for Jiren to jump off of got destroyed, and while Goku and Vegeta tried to direct him out of there, the Pride Trooper was about to land back down to the ring. But Bardock saw this coming, and he appeared right under Jiren, slamming his fist into his face. It was just the chance Goku and Vegeta needed, as together they screamed out, charging Ki into their fist, and with a thunderous strike, drove Jiren out of bounds together. It was over, and with that, the Super Dragon Balls were united. Granola thought for a second of his family, of his mom. Bardock, on the other hand, thought of the Saiyans, Gine, and Raditz. He did want them back, and now was his chance. The normal Dragon Balls weren't strong enough for this kind of wish. But the Super Dragon Balls? Perhaps they could return those who perished. But what about all those other universes? All those kids who never got to grow up? Bardock and Granola looked at each other. He couldn't believe he was doing this but he wished for the universes to be returned. But as he recited those words, Bardock had a vision like never before. A pair of horns, a dastardly smile. It was the first time in a long time he'd had such a reaction, but whatever it was, he had to stop it. His heart was beating faster and faster, but calms himself down once Granola places a hand on his shoulder. It could wait for now. And so, the team returned to Earth. The Tournament of Power was a success for Universe 7, but the adventures never came to an end. While Bardock, Goten, and Trunks were out in space, helping Granola on a bounty hunting mission, Broly and his father Paragus appeared on Earth. They had been found by Barry Blue under a program to find other powerful beings, and they were perfect to take down Goku and Vegeta once and for all, and revive Frieza. Unlike the movie, however, without Frieza to kill Paragus, Broly never goes beyond Ikari. Goku and Vegeta Vegeta's Super Saiyan Blue power is enough to take him down, and finally calm him down. And though they kicked the Frieza Force out of their planet, they were also able to extend a hand out to Paragus and Broly. They didn't have to be enemies. When Bardock and the kids returned home, they were surprised to see the new Saiyans. Bardock in particular was taken aback upon seeing Paragus. They weren't friends, but he did recognize him from the olden days. That night, the two had a talk about what it meant to be a Saiyan, and how different their sons are from what the Saiyans used to be. Paragus slowly began to understand 
understand that this universe didn't belong to him anymore, and that the new generation had a different way of doing things. Broly and Paragus would go on to stay at Beerus's planet, under the condition that Piccolo and Gohan would visit to fight and train. Beerus had been enthralled by their display at the tournament. Gohan would often be busy, but he tried his best to make it. Bardock too began to frequent it, if only to help Broly control himself with the help and knowledge of Super Saiyan 4. Still, everyone noticed just how uneasy Bardock had been. For some reason, he had asked Vegeta about King Colt and how he was defeated, and together they visited the site. Vegeta thought this was ridiculous. It was so long ago, but Bardock insisted. There was no body. Why would there be? The other Saiyan knew something was wrong, and he continued to investigate. Even after Vegeta left, there was nothing. That night, he talked to his friend, Android 17, about it. He feared that King Cold would return, and with him, Frieza. He had to stop that future, somehow. He couldn't allow this to continue. 17 had never seen Bardock like this, but he offered some insight. Long ago, 17 had been a part of a bio-android named Cell, who was composed of Frieza, Cold, and the others. He doubted Cold was around anywhere. Jiro and the Red Ribbon Army were long gone. This still didn't sit well with Bardock. He needed to find out more. The only piece of the puzzle he had was the name of Dr. Jiro, who had been dead for ages. Bardock left for his house, sitting and meditating in the wilderness. He needed to find something. He needed to sense that key. He knew what Frieza felt like. Perhaps if he looked for that, it could work. He kept getting visions. Hyper-focused on this being, he snapped. Finally, there was something. He quickly rushed towards it, finding some kind of strange lab in a warehouse. Body parts scattered about, making up zombie-like beings. They tried to attack Bardock, but he easily avoided them until finding the main tank. This was his worst fear, King Cold. A voice came from behind, a short scientist named Dr. Hedo, who yelled at Bardock over and over again to get away from that. This was his new project, but Hedo recognized him. He was the man the Red Ribbon Army warned him about, the most dangerous space criminal who'd come to invade Earth. Hedo activated something when Bardock, with a single blast, destroyed the entirety of Cold's tank. Bardock threatened Hedo. He doesn't understand the forces he's playing with, when suddenly from behind, the being that was in the pod began to stand up. It was clear that he wasn't complete. This was slightly different from the vision Bardock had. Perhaps he really had changed the future again. King Colt attacked Bardock, but as soon as the Saiyan transformed into a Super Saiyan 4, he was able to grab him by the horns, spinning out of there, and blast him. And just like that, he was done for. He looked back at Dr. Hedo, warning him as he fired another shot at the lab, blasting out of there, leaving Dr. Hedo as he grieved over his creations. He looked up at the shooting star that was Bardock and swore revenge. Bardock's life was peaceful for a while, though for some reason he remained on edge the entire time. Even while watching Pan for Gohan at his island home, Android 17 and Bardock's training was amazing for Pan to see, though Piccolo disapproved on how she would try to copy his moves during their own training. Bardock would continue to have nightmares, or maybe they were premonitions, but he was determined to stop them, no matter what. Unbeknownst to him, the Red Ribbon Army really had been surveilling him, noting his frequent travels to space. Now, with their new space branch, the Red Ribbon sets off into the stars, not realizing the power they were playing with. Next, what if Bardock was sent into the future? Thanks for watching everyone and a huge thank you to the channel supporters who get to watch videos like this early. Be sure to follow me at SmugstickDB. Did you know there's an official what if story where Krillin gets Super Saiyan? Check out my video on the weirdest official Dragon Ball what ifs to learn more.